So one night I'm at dinner with a colleague and another colleague, a chemist, of course, stepped it off to the dinner table with me. And he says, Paul, you know, the garden has done more to ruin the cause of science on this campus than anything else. <laughs> I thought, what the hell is the cause of science at the garden? <laughs> it was a warning shot over my prow brow. So that set me off. That was the trigger that led to the 30-year, 40-year effort that went into writing this book. I thought, what, what's with him? He's an organic chemist. <laughs> Isn't that an oxymoron? How did that happen? What's organic chemistry? So I started reading. And it took me back. I said, well, what's the origins of organic chemistry? And how did organic get connected to chemistry? It took me back to the smoking gun, 1828, and the artificial synthesis of urea. No kidding. The origins of organic chemistry. 1828, Friedrich Wohl, Wohl's Mueller. He heated up ammonium cyanate, and at 100 degrees centigrade, he got urea. When the shout went up, urea, I found it. <laughs> And that many didn't need a kid kidney anymore. <laughs> Up until that moment, it was thought only a kidney could produce urea, which is the nitrogen part of urine. Well, you didn't need a kidney. You needed ammonium cyanate. You could get that from inorganic sources. So you have organic chemistry as the artificial synthesis of organic material from inorganic sources. And the word organic became identified with artificial and synthetic. The great swindle, which of course led to Tang is orange juice. <laughs> and I have a quote that I put in the book that says right around this time, in the early part of the 19th century, they started calling factories plants. <laughs> Where are you going today, honey? Down to the plant. Don't forget your lunch. No kidding. So the issue of artificial and synthetic identified with organic became the great theme for me. And what happened in 1828 with this experiment was the defeat and refutation of vitalism. And vitalism was the argument in behalf of the integrity of organic nature in behalf of life. They didn't lead, need life anymore because they had reduced it to matter. It starts with Galileo. So there's a long sweep from Galileo to synthetic urea in the reduction of life forms expressed by organic nature to matter. And the argument became matter is all that matters. Strange story. Now, I'm not a critic of science per se. You know, I believe in cognitive inquiry, ruled reflection. But science took a bad turn with Galileo when he made mathematical physics the arbiter of what counts for knowledge. And then argued, nothing else counts. Now, I've got Galileo saying that. Why did he have to say that? What do you mean nothing else counts? And that's a theme that follows through what can be called the history of physicalism. It's the cramp that modern science went into. And it finally, you know, turns into a convulsion with the rejection of vitalism on the issue of the synthesis of urea. Now, what's so symbolic about this? is that synthetic urea is critical to fertilizer and what you could call synthetic soils. So urea was, the, was a big outcome from Wohler's experiment as far as the 
of food and flour production was concerned. And that's when it went industrial. And what else? Just to add insult to injury. Plastic. <laughs> Polyurethane. So synthetic fertilizer and plastic. And there you got it. And factories are plants. <laughs> plants are little factories for the production of chemicals and, and factories are big plants where they really do a lot of it. 